Yeah. We have this World Qigong Tai Chi Day event. Yeah. Yeah, so it's around the world, you know. And usually it's on Saturday, but we extended all the way from uh, Friday evening to Sunday noon. And, wow. then, and Friday evening, I invited my Chinese teacher online from China. Ooh. And oh my God, she was so incredible because, you know, how to say is she's been, you know, like living this life, you know, like from a perspective of the oneness, the whole, you know, right? So she sees everything in a totally different way. You know, like for example, she sees things vibrating just from an ordinary eye of hers, you know, right? And uh, uh, that day, uh, originally we planned to have her actually go to the park that's next to her apartment complex so that she can bring us into of her energy, you know, field and then um, walking around with us, you know, looking at uh, of the objects, you know, like the leaves and the trees and the flowers. And then, so I was hoping that she can guide us together and then looking at the things in a very uh, vibrational, you know, form, right? But uh, maybe time is not ready yet. When she was supposed to go out, Suddenly, it was like incredible rain at her location, not our place, you know, right? So at her place, it was such a big rain. And then until it was like um, uh, almost, it's already the time of her session, eight o'clock. Then the rain became a little bit uh, uh, smaller. And she was going to go out. And I said, no, 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 don't go out in the rain. You know, I don't want you to get sick, you know, because the spring, especially this last few days, you know, it was kind of cold, you know, right? So anyhow, so anyhow we didn't do that. But instead, you know, that uh, our meditators, you know, like has a lot of questions, you know. Mm -hmm. And so we asked a lot of questions to her. And I want to share with you like two things. One was that, you know, that uh, they were asking uh, one of the uh, consciousness study, um, like a scholar, and he wrote like books and things. And he's also considered by many of the uh, scholars as, uh, because he wrote his book over 20 years ago. At that time, not many people really talk about consciousness, you know, yeah. So uh, he was asking her that, you know, um, to you, like a remote viewing. And then the other one is that, you know, like see into someone else's body and able to see inside of somebody's body, like an x-ray, you know, because my teacher, you know, she, 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 she does that, you know, right? So he asked her, you know, is there any difference between the two, like a remote viewing and the other one, you know? And then uh, Li Ling, uh, it's her name. She said, there's no difference because that we are actually all one. The, the reason why that you can see, and actually everyone has the ability to do so, uh, it's just that, you know, we are so distracted. It's because we are all one. So, so the local, uh, the, the remote viewing, and also you're seeing, you know, somebody's inside of their body. Actually, you're looking at the same thing. You're looking at actually within yourself. Within yourself, you yourself containing of everything, everything in the cosmos, you know, everything of existence, you know? So you just look at the same, same thing. There's no difference. These two are the same thing, you know? Yeah. So that was one of the questions. Uh, I thought it was very interesting, you know? And then the other one was that, oh, yeah. 
everyone was asking her, how can, you know, is there a direct, you know, method or whatever way that we can practice so that we can easily enter stillness? <laughs> yeah. So she says, she says, well, you know, how to say is that every person is different, you know, because of their life experiences and everything is different, you know, to enter. So to everyone, you know, the process that how that they reach from this to that, you know, is different. It doesn't really, whatever method that you learn, you know, with someone, you know, and, and that's, uh, you know, and you feel that, you know, it's working for you, that is your way. And by the time that, you know, you master that, you know, when it comes to a point that, you know, that that is not satisfying at you anymore, whatever other teachers is going to just naturally appear. <laughs> so she's, so she's saying is that basically is that whatever method that you use, actually is only just, you know, a finger pointing to the moon. And actually is that, you know, you yourself, you know, is self-sufficient. You can do it, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's just that, you know, that uh, um, it's just when the time comes, it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So she's saying that, you know, no judgment, you know, and, uh, um and 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 just you know uh, uh do whatever and plus also is that every day you know your living and your life you know that is all part of your practice you know it doesn't mean is that you have to sit on the on the mat you know that's your practice you know yeah so she's very easy going yeah so i thought that that was really good it's great that you always uh, talk about your female master because I think in this whole scene, there are so many guys around and I'm always happy to hear about a teacher who is female, you know? Yes, yes. I think, that's, that's, I think it's it's something else because um, this, yes, this yes. Guy, they are sometimes so strong and different i don't know and um you know, i know i know yeah it, it is a little bit different yeah and yeah. The, the thing is that also another thing is that she comes from a background of you know electrical engineering and uh, you know uh, physical science right so like i think is that the way of her you know uh, logical thinking it's very easy for her to grasp, you know, people like us who had a lot of training in school, you know, that how, what, what is really is preventing us to letting go of a certain, you know, like a certain ways of thinking, you know. Mm -hmm. And then from this whole weekend, I uh, come to realization that my friend who is an expert of consciousness like he literally read every single book in this world about the consciousness. And then I noticed a pattern of his way of seeing everything or understanding everything. For example, when I mention any kind of uh, experiential, you know, experience with him, for example, when I tell him, you know, that my teacher, you know, can x-ray, you know, someone's body or when she can uh, long, long, long distance viewing or when I when me, you know, from far distance, you know, cross the continent online, I can know how the person's body feel when I tell him these things immediately, like he has a pattern and his pattern is immediately comes up and tell you a few books that in these books that these were talked about. And this is called, uh, let's say, you know, uh, clairvoyance, you know, or this is called uh, whatever. So immediately like in his, in his head, he labels it. And then once when you label it, it becomes conceptualized, you know, right? So I was saying, okay, 
So I said, it seems to me, because you are more like a scholar, so for you, when you hear something, immediately you want to go and identify whether this is something other people have already discussed and how they discussed. But uh, I said, but the thing is that my feeling is that this is, because he also is a person who is very curious you know, for example, when he labeled it, when he conceptualized it, his conclusion was that, oh, that is a special ability. So I said, well, when you think of that way, immediately you concluded that you don't have a special ability and you cannot experience that. And I said, that's, you know, that's a hint side. Yeah, that's not true, you know? So I said, well, what about is that you just let go of this. And then you just look at everything from now, trying to live your life and conducting of your activities from a totally different perspective. Starting from the wholeness, from the oneness, you start to see things from a oneness. For example, you know, uh, let's say is that when you were making a decision this weekend, whether you're going to come to uh, Eastover or not, you begin to see from the whole, and maybe you're going to you're going to figure it out is actually is that whether you come or not is very automatic. You didn't actually really there was a deliberate, let's just say, thinking and this and that and. The, your, the, at the end of the decision, you decide to come actually is that it's almost like a predetermined, it's very automatic, you know? But then when you're looking at, look at your individual and you might have thoughts, oh, okay, you know, well, this weekend I'm pretty busy. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't go or this. It seems like there's a decision process, but actually probably at the end, whether you came or not, it was pretty automatic, you know? But anyhow, so uh, at the end, you know, and and then I say, so let's say when you have an experience that rises up and uh, instead of like trying to label it saying, oh, this is uh, paranormal, you know, this is uh, whatever. How about is that not doing that and then just stay with your feeling and then feeling it how it is if from a wholeness from a oneness perspective how would that be I said maybe you know after a while you're going to like also feel these experiences yourself you know rather than only just scholarly that you heard about this you know so I thought that this was very interesting I felt there was a, some kind of pattern you know going on you know I think a lot of us do this you know do these like analytical things you know yeah. All right. So let's get into. Uh, should we do the exercise first, or we do the patting first? Should we do like the standing? I don't know, mind, but I have to leave at six today because I have uh, something else later. So in, in one hour for you, it's twelve. For me, it's six. <laughs> okay. So let's uh, let's do the uh, the standing pose to review the practice first. Okay. Because the patting, I think that you probably already, you know, more or less got it. And uh, uh, you more or less can, you know, practice yourself. Okay. All right. So, but do a, a little bit of patting so that we feel a little bit of energy. Okay. And then also at the same time, shake ourselves, you know, so that we um, get our spirit moving up. I already did the morning uh, uh, meditation practice with my uh, Chinese group. Uh, so that's at our time, usually a little bit past eight o'clock. Probably not a good convenient time for you, right? Yeah. So uh, almost every day, you know, my teacher come online and meditate with us. We've been doing this for over three years, you know.
Okay, and then uh, feel the energy that is moving in our body. And um, okay. Okay, so uh, shake a little bit more. And feel the energy. Put the feet together. I'm going to stand like this so you can see more clearly. Um, for the beginning of the form, it's more of the head, okay? So I'm going to put closer so that you can see more clearly. Okay, and then put, um, collect the chi, collect the chi, and then put the hand here, hold it here. And the feet are close together, okay? Yeah. And the first one is, first is that with the head straight, you know, and tuck the chin a little, right? Stand straight, okay? Now turn the head upward, and mainly moving the chin up, the chin up. Move forward. And then reverse, moving down along the body, using the chin and the nose as guidance. Okay. And then the second one, which is tilt the head gently and then pull the head as if you have a horn. And to this side, pull. Just remember that this is the form and spirit in one. So it's not a simple body stretch. Feel the energy, feel the spirit. And then use the nose as guide and draw an infinity, a horizontal infinity. You might hear noise in the net, change the direction. Back to the center and then relax the neck a little. So this is more relaxed, like no stretch or anything, just relax. Okay. And then next, move the two hands up 
will be two hands up. Yes, like this direct, this position, perpendicular, and then move to the side, like very sturdy. Yeah, like this, and then turn the palm, turn the palm. Three times of this up, move to the middle, stretch out, and once more. Okay, so you stay in one position. I'm just showing you in different directions, and then now. It's move the palm, see? Keep the arm stable and only move the palm. Stretch the palm. Open the thumb and the little finger. Open the next pair. Close. Stretch again. Relax. Relax. And then relax. Okay. Again. This. Open. Open. Close. Close. Open. Open. Close. Close. Now, curl the fingers from the fingers first. And then close the palm like that, and then like that, okay, like that, and then stretch, stretch, and then open, open, again. This is so connected to the heart. Open, open, close, 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 stretch, open. When we open, reverse, open the palm first, then open the finger. Okay, now relax. 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 Okay, good. All right. Now when we come down, place the palms together, stay where you are, feet together, and go up, go up, right? One arm close to the ear, and then the other one tilt, and the body turn a little, and now Push forward, and then change to the other side, the other arm closer to the ear, and then push forward, again. So when we push forward, the hip moves also, okay? And then back to the middle, and then the other side of the hip. Okay, again. And this side. Okay, that's great. Okay, now stretch a little. Stretch. So when we stretch, we really stretch upward. Okay. And then now, when, they, when we curl down, the head is like the firm head. Curl the head into the, the chin, curls in. Now, neck, shoulder, upper back, middle back, lower back, further, the knee should be bent, and the two hands, 
feet, how much you can reach the floor. So stretch the hip here, right? Stretch the hip three times. Try to reach the floor. The knee need to be bent. Just stretch the hip. Now turn to the left. Same stretch. Stretch the hip. Now turn to the right. Stretch. And then put your hand in the back of the feet and stretch, stretch, stretch. Now back up. When we back up, stretch the hip first, then the lower back, then the middle back, then the upper back, then the shoulder blade, then the shoulder, the lower part of the neck, the neck, and then the head back up. Okay? So it's like one vertebral by one vertebral to flex the vertebral. Now once more, stretch, 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 stretch. Okay, all right, once more, curl the head like a fan. Right. And so one at a time. So Now back to our position, back to our original position. Okay, so now this is the next one. I'm gonna step back so you can see my feet. Oh, that's okay, that's, it's difficult to see the feet. Uh, but anyhow, I'll describe it to you. It's very easy. So we were with the two feet we were together and we are back to this position. So now is that just like along the floor, move like actually one way of moving is um, open the toes to the side and then move the heel, you know? So this way you're gonna be naturally standing at like a shoulder width, you know, the feet is a shoulder width, okay? At here, now is that move the hip. So the hip, in this way, if I stand like this, you will not see me moving like this, not the first one. So the first one is like moving the hip from side to side. So when we see like this, you can see. So it's like side to side. So it's like the tailbone, the tailbone, imagining there's a, a rabbit tail and the, it's drawing like a circle. In one way of a drawing circle from left to right, right? So moving the hip and then changing the direction, moving from right to left. Right to left. Okay. Right? 
So then the next one, see the next one is moving of um, the, the tailbone stick out and then tuck the tailbone. Out, tuck. Out, tuck. Out, tuck. Out, tuck. Okay? And then from here, the next one. The next one. Okay. So the next one, we were standing like this. The next one is uh, open the toes further out, like both sides further out and the heels further out. And if you're able to, you can even more so out, okay? So you are like on a, on a, like a, a horse stand, you know, like a horse stand. So it's like this, like this, okay? So it's like this, all right, like this. And then I want to see you my arm because uh, after you stand on like this, you are just sturdy on the ground, okay? So you stand like this. Now, so the hand is from here, right? So it comes up, comes up, see? Like up, making a circle, making a circle, and then come back to here. And then we move, making circles. Keep this part in the middle, in the middle, and then this, See, move like that. Using the elbow to draw like a circle, a side circle. This is a very good practice. And we can do it sitting on a chair like this. Very good for moving the inside of the whole abdominal and the lung. So it's like, see when I move like this, <laughs> I can hear my lung being rubbed. So when I did this, I used my right arm making the guide of the circle. The other arm just follow. Now we can change and we can make the left arm. You might be reverse and as the guiding circle and the other one fall. Okay. Very good for pancreas health. Like Adjusting blood sugar. Okay. Uh, again, once more. So this one in the series, it does two times. So I show you on the side how it looks like. See, it's like this. See? The elbow is making circular move to guide the body and keep the hip like almost the, not moving, sturdy. Keep the hip sturdy. Just use the arm as a guideline, but actually makes the whole front of the abdominal area in front of the chest, the lung, or move. So it's like we have a close, you see the close is soft. So when we do that, see look, look, the close naturally moves like this. You know, see look, see, see? So the inside of the body, that's how inside, the body is being naturally 
massage. Okay? Right? Okay? All right. Now we are tired. <laughs> Let's just stand up. Okay. So now naturally force into this position. See? So this can be a... Uh, so, and our feet is standing where it was. See, look, this falls into a natural position. And if we want to, we can actually use this as one of the standing post meditation. And we can stand longer here, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, okay? And now, when you become tired in this position, can open up and fully receiving the energy from the universe. You see, when we open up like this, so when we open up like this, see this part of the body goes in. So see the body is like this, and the butt stick out a little, and then the standing force is not on the knee at all. It just goes to the ground. The ground becomes the ankle. The ground becomes the ankle. So we are so sturdily standing like this. Again, we can use this as a standing pose meditation. And when you stand like this, there's no straining on the knee. There's no straining on the body. The body is kind of like in a energetically balanced pose. And everything just goes into the ground and it taps into the energy of the earth. And the energy just naturally comes up, comes up and goes back. And there's no straining on our body. We should not feel tired at all. We can stand here forever because it's all very balanced. The weight of the head, the weight of, the, of our body above the shoulder, and the arm is receiving energy from the universe. So any of the weight above the shoulder, it travels along of our chest and then make a turn here, goes to, travels down to the earth. There's nowhere any of that weight is putting on our body. That's why at this position, you can stand for a long time without feeling tired. And this is actually one of the very good position to go into stillness. It's very easy to go into stillness from this point because you don't feel tired. There's no weight on your knee. And you feel so much energy. So much energy coming through the logong shi of the palm. Travel down, travel through the body. There's a tingling, warm feeling between the palm. Travels down. And the head, adjust the shoulder and the head. Totally relax. Totally relaxed. So relaxed. Whatever that any kind of strength or force needs to be endured, it just travels down the body, goes to the ground. So grateful to earth. So grateful to the universe that I can feel so much energy coming into um, just this really, really empty vessel, a conduit. We are just a conduit, a conduit.
can't do it of receiving this universal energy. And it comes through of the head, the back way. Feel like, you know, I'm basking in this unlimited source of energy of the universe. And this travels down and travels down and keep circling, send it down to the earth, send it down to the earth, and then at the center of the earth, moving up together with the universal energy. Okay, all right, so now, and then when we want to come back to our position, so we just come back and make your hand come to the center and then naturally sends down the energy through the head into the body, comes back down, comes back, and then come back to this position again and put the two feet together again. So now the two feet are together. And the next one, which, so we are standing like this, standing like this. So the next one is that now move the hand to the back, to the back. I see holding the back, support to the lower back, where the kidneys, okay? So now, now bend the knee, bend the knee, and then see, how much that you can move down and then at this position. So bend the knee with your front of the thigh straight. Feel the energy that's moving. Feel how the energy is moving within your body. How is that moving down toward the feet? in contact with the earth, going into the earth, to the center of the earth, circling back up, curl up to the back way on top of the head, moving down, and we are supported. Feel the chi, Feel the vibration of the kidney. Feel that. Also feel the energy. Feel the energy that's traveling along the spine, down to the tailbone, to the side of the hip, to the back and center of the side, moving down, toward the earth, and then moving back up. So all of that, we don't really purposely go and do that, just automatically. Energy moves automatically, okay? All right. Now, move back up, relax the knee, relax the knee, and the hands up. Collect the chi and comes down, come down, come down. Now come to this point, come to this point, come to here, come to here. Now gather the chi, gather the chi, gather the chi, gather the chi, and gather the chi to here. Put this arm here, put this arm here. And now, same with this arm, gather the chi, gather the chi. To here, again, okay. Be still for a second. Feel the energy. So the, the fingertips are touching of the acupoint here. and quietly making an own sound. 
quietly, not a sound out. And now, from the quiet sound, if you heard the sound in your upper palate, if you like the own sound, and then when the own sound traveled to the palate, when it's over there, when it's already there, Okay, and now let's circle this energy. So hand is here now. Circle the energy and making like like this, and then we circle it. Circle it. Now we're going to uh, what do you call that? Like you know, like bend to the knee, bend the knee, and moving down, moving down like this. Like a cylinder of energy that's between your hands and up. And then change the direction. And moving down, moving down, and bend down, bend the knee first, bend down, and then put the hands, put the hands in front of, on top of the toe, like when we bend down, after we bend down, put the hands on top of the toe, and then in a squatching position. I don't know. At the beginning, you might not be able to do it. You might, uh, you know, fall to the back. That's totally natural, totally fine. Okay, see? Uh, so I can, I can 100% bend down, okay? And then lift up the hip three times. One, and down. One, and down three times. Okay, and then put the two hands between the legs, between the legs, and move up, move up, and back to this position. Okay, all right, that's not easy. <laughs> okay, so there's an exercise that we can do and I can show to you, and uh, and that's a very, very good exercise that I can show you. So maybe today, I think it's already a lot new ones for today, but I'll show you an exercise. And this exercise is very interesting and very good. And if we do that exercise, and then what we did over here, you know, like bending down and then bend down, Complete, completely, you know, like, like you know, in a squat, squash uh, position, and the two hands on top of the toe, make it totally actually possible, okay? And right now, maybe it's not possible for everyone, but uh, um, there's a practice I'm gonna show to you now, and. Uh, which is very interesting. So let me see, where do I do that? Okay. I'm gonna turn my computer so that you can see how we do this exercise. Okay. So there's a wall over here and uh, I'll show you. So uh, this is a very, classic exercise, which that it's very good for strengthening the lower back. And some people have a herniated disc. It might help them recover from the herniated disc. Okay, 
So it's very simple. Uh, it's easier at the beginning to wear a shoe because the shoe has a thickness of the heel. But without the heel, the beginner is probably difficult, okay? So, so we stand up close to the wall. Yeah, I move out a little so that you can see me. So the toes are not far away from the wall. Stand straight and the legs are together, okay? Now we're gonna bend down like a slope because your head cannot move forward. If you move your head forward, your nose is gonna bump on the wall, right? So this is why this exercise is very effective. So you use the wall, you're up against the wall, and then you bend down. And your knee don't have that much space, you see. You can't have your knee, you know, go through the wall. So you bend down, bend down, bend down, until all the way to the ground, okay? And then you come back up. Again, you come back up, you cannot, your head cannot bump the head, bump the wall, and your knee cannot bump the wall when you go down. When you come up, your nose cannot bump the wall. So initially, when you practice of this, it's not that easy. You move your body away from the wall a little bit, okay? You can start with, I don't know, eight inches, 10 inches, and then gradually move closer and move closer to only two or three inches, okay? It's not easy, okay? But if you're able to do this, and then you do 30 a day, start up with 10 a day, it will really, really strengthen the strength of your lower leg. And that is great. And we will not fall because of that. Okay. <laughs> Okay, that's not easy, right? <laughs> I'm too heavy on my back. <laughs> I always fall. <laughs> so I, I can't I, keep the, the the back quite straight, but when I when I'm too close, then it makes like this. <laughs> also, I'm down, but uh, yeah. if I'm too heavy. Yeah, actually, why this practice is so effective for exercise of the spine and the strength of your leg, and actually, it will be so helpful to prevent us, you know, like aging and falling, you know? And it should lose about 10 kilograms, <laughs> then it's better. <laughs> and then it has, you know, really actually straighten of yeah. the that naturally. So for people who have a herniated disc, it's really a very good practice. I know so many of my Chinese friends that through practicing this to cure of the herniated disc, like a chronic pain, and the also the sciatic pain, you know? Okay. So um when I had before I went to Japan, you know, I used to do at least 30 of them. And with my toes, you know, two or three inches up against the wall, you know, and that was a part of my uh, uh, exercise. That's why, you know, when I climb the mountains, you know, I'm pretty good. <laughs> but this is a very good practice. And but anyhow, is that the reason, only reason I tell you about this uh, is not that I want to add anything. It's only that in this 10, you know, form series. There was this one which that, you know, you're going to bend down. And then a lot of people like, you know, they, they were four, you know, like the, the butt was sit on the floor, you know. OK. <laughs> well, anyhow, um, maybe like we stop here for this form practice. Right. And um, we can. Uh, what time is it? Oh, my goodness. It's already 12 o'clock. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, I think I have to leave because yeah, I, you have, I know you had to go. Okay. So maybe we'll just to the end. We've done a lot. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. And it's always a pleasure to see you both. <laughs> yeah, nice to see you. Thank you so much, Ian. Thank you. It's it's it's, it's um, super good. I feel so good every time after this session. I yes, yes, that's good. So uh practice, okay? And I'm gonna put it on YouTube so that you know anywhere you forgot you can reference and then practice, okay? Thank you. Okay, bye. Thank you.